Okay, I hear some thunder, so hopefully I can make this short and sweet before the rain comes. But I wanted to share something that I've been experiencing or going through in my own personal walk. So, and I'm sure I look like an absolute mess, but I've been backpacking for two days. So this is real. This is what we look like in the wild. So if you can look past that, then I promise there is some good um, spiritual content coming your way. <laughs> so um, something that I have been experiencing is a lot of confusion as far as negative emotions and my faith. So I used to think that anytime I felt fear or doubt or anxiety or worry or any type of uncertain emotion caused by the things going on around me or even the stuff going on in my own head, that that was grounds for a, a mental timeout that I needed to make myself feel as bad as possible and as guilty as possible for at least this amount of time to properly repent of feeling those emotions. And this is something I'm learning is really just not helpful. But just because I have fear or anxiety or worry, God is not going to turn his back on me. And that's something that from a lot of different influences from other believers and the church, just lots of influences over my Christian walk kind of led me to believe that if I feel these things that that is bad and wrong and that I am turning against Jesus and that just I'm in a lot of trouble, okay? And so this is something that has been going hand in hand with another lesson that I've been learning, and that is more about who God is and his character. And the two attributes or characteristics that I am seeing the most in my life right now is him as a father and as a lover. So God is a caring parent who would do anything for his children to make sure that they are cared for, that they are, are loved, that they have all of the guidance that they require. And he is also a lover. He pursues us. He, like Jesus says, would lay down his life like he did for the church, would do anything for his bride. And something else that is both amazing and also very frustrating is most of the time whenever I am having a conflict in my marriage, it almost perfectly mirrors a conflict that I am having in my relationship with God. And so this is both a blessing and a curse. So it's, it's good because I'm growing in both of these relationships, but it's just so frustrating and terrible when I hit a brick wall and I just cannot figure out how to resolve both of these situations or conflicts in those relationships. But um, all of that aside, something that I've been realizing is that the same way that if you were a parent and your child was experiencing a lot of anxiety or doubt about something, you wouldn't, after maybe the second, third, fourth time it happens, maybe they're scared of something under the bed, maybe you've told them over and over, no, it's okay, just do this, nothing bad is going to happen, I've got you, and they still just don't believe you, you know, there's tears, there's all kinds of emotions, and, you know, but they just won't believe you. In the same way that it might be frustrating for you as the parent, you're not going to, on like the third or fourth time it happens, say, okay, you know what, kid, I'm done with you. You, you, can, you can figure out your own situation. You've just tested my nerves for the last time and, and I'm done with you. Hopefully. 
normally as a parent you wouldn't do that because that's not very caring or loving but you would definitely be disappointed like you know your child is better than this and this is a situation if it recurs you know I've been true to my word before why would I not be true to my word this time hopefully you see the parallel already with God that just because we experience fear or doubt like the third fourth time he doesn't turn his back on us and say okay nope this is this is too much for me you're on your own you're just a hopeless case beyond anything that I can help like he wouldn't do that and in the same way that if you're a spouse you know if your spouse or significant other is experiencing the same thing or you've told them over and over and they just have anxiety or they have some kind of doubt about something you're not gonna say nope okay we need to break up we're getting a divorce this this is just too much you're beyond my help so why would God do that that's not his nature and there's a verse which I will add because I'm drawing a blank right now that says even when we are faithless he remains faithful so when we have our moments of doubt and lack of faith he stays true to his character he stays true to his promises and our emotions our reactions our inner thoughts do not dictate whether or not God stays true to everything he is or says that he will do and that's so comforting because whew, some of us including myself if, if our God's trueness was dependent on our own emotional state or actions, we would be in a world of trouble. So I am so glad that he stays faithful even when I am faithless. And even when you are faithless, he remains faithful. So as flawed human beings, we can still be good to our children and make sure that they have everything they need, if not more, so then God being completely perfect as a father, why would he not give you so much more and so much greater than a flawed human being could possibly provide? And this is something that I've been realizing. I am taking my knowledge of what earthly parents or earthly relationships are like and projecting that onto God, thinking that he is the same way and it's just not so. So that's why we need to make sure that we are going to the Word and that we are listening to directly what God's voice says about who He is and not so much what everybody else says or our experiences with other people and our experience in our own trials and situations in life because those things do not dictate who God is and whether or not he will do what he says he will do. So I think I had another verse in there that was really helpful. Give me a minute to think. I'm sure I'll remember it in a second. But to wrap this all up, should we live in fear and anxiety and worry and doubt and faithlessness? Absolutely not. But we are flawed and we are bound to do it. And these emotions are normal like this is a fallen world, you're gonna experience these things. And it's just not helpful at all to waste more time feeling bad about feeling bad. <laughs> so all of this to say that the good news is when we do doubt God, when we do feel fear and anxiety, we can bring that to him and he can provide us with peace and comfort and oh, that's it that's the one there's a verse in Philippians about how when we bring our cares to him the peace that surpasses all understanding will be given to us so beyond anything that is logical his peace can be ours no matter what the circumstances um, <laughs> but so the good news is that while we should not doubt God, we should not distrust Him, we should not feel, we should not believe that because of the things going on around us that He has let go of us and that we're completely out of His protection and out of His care, 
while we should not feel that way, it's going to happen. And the even better news is that that is something that Jesus took to the cross for us, the forgiveness of our sins. So when we doubt God, when we distrust him for our own flawed human reasons or the circumstances around us, ask for forgiveness and move past it. Jesus has already taken it to the cross. There's no reason to drag it on and on throughout your day or even your week. Move past it and ask for the peace that surpasses understanding. And this is true about all the mistakes and goofs that we make as flawed people, is that Jesus covered all of those sins, all of those wrong choices that go against God, he covered them. There's no reason for us to try to hold on to them. It's already been taken. It's already been finished. And if you're already walking with God and in a relationship with him, that's something you should just desire is to have a clear, clean relationship with him. I know that I don't like fighting with my husband and I would love nothing more than no matter how stupid the argument or if I feel justified, more often than not, clearing that relationship and coming to an understanding, even if it's when, and coming to an understand, clearing that relationship, even when it's times when I've done something wrong, I want that reconciliation. And so in that same way, if we are abiding in him and we're in close relationship with him, when we make those mistakes, it should be just this desire to quickly ask for forgiveness, move past it. It's already been forgiven. So it's like the gift is already on the table before you even ask for it. I'm surprised that like all the other people walking up the trail have not gathered around for sermon time. Come for the hike, stay for the message. Anywho, all of this to say that we are going to experience fear and anxiety and doubt. These are normal emotions. It's a fallen world. But God is not going to reject us and turn his back on us. And he still is faithful and a loving father. And when we notice that we are distrusting him for whatever reason, we just need to ask the forgiveness and move past it and ask him for all of the things that we need to replace what we're experiencing. So if it's fear, ask him to remove that fear and replace it with confidence. If we're feeling doubt, ask him to remove and forgive that doubt and fill us with a faith, a belief that he is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm a growing, learning Christian, so it could be that everything I'm saying right now is way off and years down the road, I'm gonna be like, no, that's not how it is. For me, I'm still figuring things out, a lot of really important things. It's been a several year journey just to get to this point that God is who he is and he does what he says he will do. And learning still all the things that he says he is. I don't think I fully have a grasp on all of that or all the promises that he says that he will fulfill. Um, but day by day, bit by bit, I'm learning more and more of it. And I hope in the future to share more of that with you. But yeah, I hope that this was uh, really helpful. <laughs> and I hope that you can get maybe a tiny nugget of wisdom from it and that my wild um, appearance didn't distract too much from uh, anything that I had to share. But yeah, I hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, ooh. I hear that thunder, so I think we're wrapping up just in time before the rain comes in. Tracing my footsteps through the wind.